<laughs> hey, I'm Stu. And I'm David. And this is Bruce Brothers, Brothers Go. Go. Right now we are in Boyle Heights at the Indie Brewing Company. That's right. And we're going to interview with, uh, are you the owner? I am one of the owners. One of the owners. Yep. And stay tuned. So, uh, Connor, what's the story? How did you come to land here? Here in Boyle Heights? Uh, well, we were looking around the city. We really wanted to be downtown as much as we could. Uh, if you look out our window, you can actually see the downtown skyline. So we were really interested in um, being a part of the regeneration of downtown and the renaissance that has been happening here in the last five, 10 years. Uh, so we found this spot. The building is really unique for a brewery. Uh, you know, we've got pavers and palm trees down the corridors and train tracks come into the building. Uh, so we really just fell in love with the, the space and Boyle Heights is one of the like tightest knit communities in Los Angeles. Um, and so we really like that community aspect of it as well. And we wanted to build a family here uh, around our beer uh, as much as we could. So Connor, yes. Um, how did you get in? You look pretty young. I don't know if you're even old enough to drink, but um, almost. <laughs> almost. Yeah. You can't see my ID though. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. What um, What got you into brewing? Or how did you start doing this? Yeah. So uh, I was a senior in college at Colgate University in Central New York, and uh, I had recognized that I wanted to be an entrepreneur at that point, mm -hmm. but I wasn't really dialed in on what. Is that I code to do for that? I recognize I didn't play well with others? <laughs> Entrepreneur. Kind of, yeah, it was code for like, I don't like people telling me what to do. I I'm, like, I'm going to figure out exactly how to, the yeah. same way. Yeah. Like, I'm going to figure out how I can do sh stuff. You I don't know, can, can I say we shit can, on show? We can say shit all we want. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. um, don't, don't judge me, Mom. Uh, but yeah, so I was really just didn't like working for people. I didn't like people telling me what to do. I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. And funny enough, I drank a lot of beer in college. And so I was what? I know, right? Who, who does that? But so I was hanging out with my friends drinking a beer and I looked down at my the bottle in my hand. I was like, I should start a brewery. And of course my friends were like, yeah, you should totally start a brewery. <laughs> um, this sounds a lot like, dude, we should start a band. I know. Here, yeah. hold my beer, watch this. But it was with beer. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Which they go hand in hand. They do, yeah. So uh, I graduated in 2009, there were no jobs in the market, and I also grew up skiing a lot, so I knew that I wanted to be a ski bum, and I wanted to brew beer. Uh, so that eventually led me to Park City, Utah, where I landed a job as a waiter at a brew pub. Uh, it's actually where I met our head brewer, James, and um, I was waiting tables there. I was trying to get into the brewing side of the brew pub more, but that wasn't really panning out, but James and I, within a couple months, had started home brewing together. So we were mm -hmm. doing 10 gallon batches uh, every week, splitting them, messing around with different yeast, different dry hops, different adjuncts, spices, whatever, you name it. Really just dialing in what we like to drink. Mm -hmm. um, so I was in Utah from 2009 to 2011. Uh, I'm an LA native and LA was starting to call, call me back. And at the time, LA also did. Connor! <laughs> So you were you were here and then you went to New York for school. I was here. I went to New York for school. And what would you what you major in? I was a Japanese and geology double major. Wow! And so there was no jobs. Well, <laughs> there was no that's jobs common. for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, <laughs> well, there were. I'm sure there were jobs, but I wasn't. I wasn't looking for them. Uh, I told my parents I was like, yeah, I look super hard. There's absolutely nothing out there. So I'm, I'm gonna, gonna go start making beer. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go make beer. Like, what can I get? What can I get? Uh, uh, what can I graduate with? that actually gives me zero opportunity to work for corporate America. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That was kind of the idea. I was like, I knew, my mom <laughs> works parents. for corporate America, and I was like, a desk. Ugh, yeah. Cubicle. Cubicle computer. I'm with you. No, I, I'm totally you. with you. Yeah. So, so LA called you back. LA called me back. That's when uh, I reconnected with Morgan, who's my other partner, and I met Kevin. Uh, I met Kevin through my dad's agent's wife's brother is Kevin's childhood best friend. Who we'll was in a movie with Kevin Bacon. Sure. He was. Yeah, Kevin Bacon was definitely good. involved, <laughs> for sure. So uh, we, we like met one night at Father's office in Culver City. And as, as I'm driving, he texts me. He's like, hey, man, this might sound a little weird, but I'm the dude at the end of the bar in the blue hoodie. And I was like, <laughs> cool, man. I'm the guy with the book and with the rose in it. Uh, so we really connected. We had the same like. No, that uh, didn't sound creepy. <laughs> <laughs> It's how uh, connections are made, you yeah, know? Yeah, exactly. It's natural. It's LA. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, it's all it's actually yeah. pretty natural in LA. Yeah. Uh, so we had the same vision, and I was homebrewing with Morgan at the same time. 
he also had the same vision, so we all linked up together and we started writing the business plan and, and off we went. Yeah. So funny because with any other party substance, if you started making it at home, you get arrested. Yeah, yeah. But with beer, beer and wine, it's okay. Yeah, you can do that. It's okay. Yeah, I, I've you made my own even... cider before, like oh, a nice. hard cider. Yeah, I made some of that before. I have fun. a friend of mine who's uh, he actually uh, was the food and bev manager for a high-end restaurant here in LA, oh, nice. and he got into making a lot of his own liqueurs. Okay. So limoncello and yep. you know yada yada nice. yada, but only for personal consumption. He wasn't actually. Yeah. yeah. He didn't branch out of selling it, and then he moved back to the East Coast. And now works a farm where they're growing a lot of things that to put is. into restaurants really and stuff cool. like that. Yeah, that's really, that's really cool. cool. Yeah. It's, uh, Hi, Jonathan. There we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, brewing and like homebrewers tend to get a little carried away. So you know, you start with your like spaghetti pot that you just had. Mm -hmm. You start boiling on your electric stovetop, and then quickly it just ratchets up. And so by the end of the two years that James and I were brewing together. His entire apartment was full of brewing equipment, and it looked. Your just neighbors like, must have loved you. It like it looked like a total meth then. They're like, yeah. dude, why does it smell so bready, yeasty, yeah. hoppy? So, well, I, I noticed that it, yeah. walking into here, um, and we're going to show footage of uh, of all the equipment and stuff. Um, yeah. Show people what it's like from from a home brew to like some serious. Yeah, we have our home brew set up back there too, so we can even do like the a little, a little before back nice, then, a little nice, retro nice. to yeah. what it's like now. Yeah. But I noticed the uh, the smell. Mm -hmm. It is a very interesting, different smell. What is that? That's the barley. So the base of every beer is barley. Mm -hmm. uh, and the first step in brewing is cracking that barley and then steeping it in a very like controlled temperature environment. So it's usually around 160 degrees. And what that does is you get that sweet, bready uh, off of it. And where we are right now in the brewing process is uh, we're in the boil. So that's where we also add hops. So once you add those hops, you get a little bit of the the, you get like piney, citrusy, that kind of smell can yeah. in those as well. It's interesting because I have heard that you don't actually need the hops in beer. Mm -hmm. Originally hops was was a process of preservation. Right. And they tried to take it out and it tastes like nothing. Yeah. Or it tastes, it has well, a less flavor palette in it it's if you take the hops it can. out. It can, it can. There, there's actually a brewery in LA, Solark, where they do Groots, which is the name for beers without hops in them. And they I did a, not know that. They use a lot it's of like Groot, Groot like from like, uh, like from Guardians of the Galaxy. Right. Like, yeah, I am Groot. I am Groot. Nice. Yeah. That means a beer without hops. Yeah, and so. they, all they say ever when we talk to them, they go, "I am Solark." You know? <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> they're really good guys. Uh, so you can still do it. And you can make really like they make really flavorful, great beer without using hops in a lot of their beers. So it's possible. But for me, someone that really likes drinking IPAs and hoppy beers, that wouldn't. What Interesting. I didn't know that. That's, those are like way above my my knowledge level. But I when I first heard that, I was like, oh wow, that's mm -hmm. interesting. Because yeah. there's a lot of things that we do that were based on whether it be with beer or whatever. Yeah. They were either based out of uh, necessity. Uh, it was a low cost item at the mm -hmm. time. Right. You know, a lot of things that in in food that are high dollar items now yeah. came about because we needed something to as filler, yeah. and so we came up with you know. Like quinoa. You know, whatever, quinoa, yeah, quinoa or, or yeah, whatever yeah, it happens yeah. to do, or, or, or chicken salad, you yeah. know. We need to make this chicken go farther, so we're yeah. going to put all this stuff in it. Definitely. And now it's an item that costs you an arm and a leg if you go to a nice place and get yeah, it. So yeah. it's kind of weird that way. $16 a pound at Whole Foods. Right, right. right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the Whole Foods. Now, does, does something like, do you guys uh, have any outlets that you use like Amazon for, for, for delivery or? Uh, we don't. We actually uh, have a distributor though. Okay. So similar idea. We distribute through Guardian Los Angeles. There's a small boutique distributor that started around the same time we did. Um, and yeah, they, they're they great. They've got a sales team. They're really small. They only have a few brands, so they're able to focus on us, uh, especially in the downtown LA area since you know that's, that's really our strongest market here, like Northeast LA, South Bay, and the Valley. Um, so we're in Whole Foods, Total Wine, Bevmo, and then wow. I don't know, That's another kind of 150, deal, right? 200 accounts around Los Angeles. Nice. Yeah. Are you in, one of my favorite places is Beer Belly. Beer Belly, we've been in and out. In and out. Well, yeah. yeah, they rotate through. They rotate it's a like, lot. Yeah. Yeah. I like them just because of the fact that they, you never go in and get the same thing. Right. And they don't have anything that you probably, in most grocery stores, would go in and right. just pick up off of the shelf. Exactly. It's not in a can, it's all. You're not going to find it elsewhere. No, no, no. Yeah. It's really now, the, uh, the duck the, fries are. Um, the micro brew industry has grown like tremendously Crazy. Um, in the last I don't know how many years do you think since since it's really I mean it's been off. exploding for like 
15 years yeah, or so. Yeah. I think it's the, there have been like two brewery openings a day in the United mm-hmm. States for the last wow. couple of years. Mm-hmm. How, do you, like how do you feel like that's affected uh, the big boys like, you know, uh, like Budweiser, obviously Budweiser. They're buying up the, they're it, buying up the Well, they the were an American brewers. company, now they're a Japanese company. They're Belgian, I believe. Belgian. I think InBev is Belgian. Okay. Yeah. I knew they got bought out by a not American company. Yeah. Which uh, made me a little sad, even though I don't really care for Budweiser myself. Right, I've right. never been my thing. I mean, I could, I could literally spend an hour on a tangent about Budweiser. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's affecting them. They're, the, the domestic lager category is shrinking year over year. Uh, so they're seeing declines of 2%, 3% year over year. So their barrelage is way down uh, mm. over the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years as craft beer has kind of chipped away at that market. Uh, domestic lagers are starting to lose appeal because once you drink a craft beer, it's hard to you know take that step back to something that really doesn't have that much flavor. No, it's true, yeah. Offer. I mean, it's, so. it's interesting because traditionally, like growing up, I wouldn't have thought of, of beer in the same category as wine. Right. But it really is a matter, I think wine, beer, and pot yeah. are really, really similar, yeah. right? You always start out with the cheapest crap, and mm-hmm. so you either like it or you don't like right. it. And then as you go, there's like a natural progression. Right. What's the natural progression in beer from, this is what my dad drank, right. and so Hams. what's the my, next? My dad drank Hams, Hams, I remember yeah, Hams. Yeah, or Jenny, and I think or Geneseo is one of my dad's favorites. Hams. I remember yeah. Schlitz, that's how old Olympia, Olympia, yeah. too. Olympia, yeah, Olympia. So what do you think is the it's natural progression when you're, uh, as, a, as, a, as a beer drinker, yeah. here I am, uh, I'm, I'm fresh out of college, yeah. I'm, I, I'm tired of drinking, uh, you know, store bought, Budweiser, right. Coors Light. What do you see as that? Like in wine, it's Merlot, mm. Cabernet, yeah. and then it goes up from there. Right. Uh, so for beer, I would say your Kolsch and your Pilsners, you know, they are similar in style to your domestic lagers, but they have much more depth of flavor. They're brewed in small batches, so they have a higher quality, but they will be reminiscent mm. of a light beer. So if you're drinking a Pilsner, you're drinking a Kolsch. It's not that much of a step away from your the, mouth the doesn't method. freak out. Yeah, your mouth doesn't freak out. You're not going like, oh my god, what did I just drink? You know, like what is going on? I've never don't, experienced don't jump right like into this. something really heavy or well, dark or you know. You can. See, for me, that was yeah. the, that was the harder part for me. I never liked it. Was yeah. that the darker beers? You know, the Guinnesses and things like that were just they were nasty to me. That yeah. they were just too bitter yeah. and they're just too like murky. And they, like I am naturally drawn to things like a Hefeweizen and stuff right. like that. Yeah, me too. But that's lighter. just my yeah. Yeah. lighter. Yeah, definitely. Um, I like a nice sissy beer <laughs> <laughs> with an I, umbrella in it too. With a lot of with a lot of with a, lot of punch. With a, with a, with a slice of slice yeah, of orange, orange yeah, slice of yeah. orange. Very traditional. Shock top. Yeah. Yeah. Very traditional. Well, also things like like I've seen a lot of these micro breweries have become big. You yeah. have those little shock tops and all these little places that started off. I mean, there's some. Uh, I'm from Northern California, okay. and so there's um, you know quite a few. Up in Chico Definitely. and all these little micro yeah, Sierra breweries. Nevada. Sierra Nevada, yeah, that's Shock one top, of them. Spoiler alert is actually Budweiser. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it goes and, it, and yeah. they they get bought up by these bigger companies. Well, the Budweiser they, actually started Shock Top, oh, did they? As like a crafty brand, much as Blue Moon is owned by Coors. Okay. And that was started as a crafty brand. That was the first strategy of Big Bear. I like those. I, I, yeah. I really. I was, those yeah. So Blue Moon was was never a, a actual craft beer. No. But nice. Sierra, so they would like you to oh, I have so, so many friends that are going to be like, that's not real. But Sierra <laughs> is, what about like, um, like, is, like flat tire or whatever? Uh, Isn't that what? New Belgium one? is still, I believe they're employee owned. Uh, but like Lagunitas, they got bought by Heineken. They're they're fully big beer now. Uh, Ballast big Point beer. is fully like big that. beer now. Yeah. Um, Firestone Walker is like 50% Duval. So wow. they're kind of in this weird gray area Isn't where they're kind of, kind of not. Uh, no, what about so what about the future for you? Do you you want to do it where people well, someone's gonna recognize you and, and give you like a couple million dollars and buy you out? Would that, that be is cool? absolutely not what we're in this for. Okay, I mean, that's yeah, good to know. Uh, you heard it here first. Heard it here first. That's, that's right. not what we're trying to do. Start a small. We're gonna. Yeah, I mean, so I tell people I have. So going back to the story of how we started, I've been working on this since 2008, and this has been my dream since 2008. Uh, I've been. <laughs> I don't want to stop doing this. Like, this is really what I see. It took eight years to get this going, and I don't really want to turn around and just be like, all right, cool, now this is not my operation. I don't have control over it. Um, you know, a lot of people argue that the beer quality doesn't change when they get bought out. That's, there's no way have, that it but can. But then you have a huge corporate structure above you, yeah. and, they want to and that was produce. the whole reason that yeah. we are indie. Like, yeah. we went independent from our corporate jobs to start with. 
it's not something that we're looking to go back into. Well, I think if it's like food, like I'm a big food geek, mm -hmm. I'll admit it. Yes, yeah. right, I'm bougie and I'll admit it. <laughs> um, but there's a certain size of operation where all you can be is middle. Yeah. Quality-wise, mm -hmm. right? Because the, it's the only way you can make it all the same right. from location to location to location. The and I can't imagine that beer is any different. Right. You guys can keep this at a certain quality, at a high level, you can right. source local, you're really in control of what's happening, Definitely. but as soon as it goes grow. nationwide, worldwide, yeah. now we're on a different level. Now we've got to buy bulk, I mean, yeah. really bulk, you know, really like bulk. in a massive yeah. amount. So it's, I can't imagine that it's very, really even possible to Auto not anymore. just get like, and this is it now. It, I mean, it is. Um, so some of the advantages that really large breweries have are that they have purchasing power. So then they can go to the hop farms and source an entire lot of right. hops, which someone like us, we could go there, but nobody's gonna be like, yeah, you can totally buy $100,000 worth of hops. And be like, yeah, actually we really can't send them. Yeah, like, we're really like <laughs> about uh, 10, yeah. Yeah. $10. A few bags. Yeah. Yeah. We'll take a couple pounds, you know? Yeah. Right. yeah. So, uh, so there's like, there are, you can be large and still produce really high quality beer. Uh, it's not necessarily that you flatline, plateau. A lot of breweries spend a lot of money on labs and quality control, so they're making sure that every product does come out the same. That being said, I think there is some kind of like mental, you know, in like people's heads once a beer gets to a certain size. You can take uh, Sam Adams, for example. Mm -hmm. I think Sam Adams brews really, really good beer. But their sales are crashing right now because people see them as so they're big they're that so they're not really they're craft, not really they're not local, they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not speaking to the consumer like we can speak to the right. consumer. It's funny because music, I, I, my wife used to work in the music industry mm -hmm. and I, I used to book bands and stuff. Yeah. It, it, music is the same way. There's a, there's a certain mentality of, of people that are like, dude, I love this band. They're so good, man. They're new. Nobody's ever heard of them. Yeah. They're the best. And as soon as they become successful, it's like, oh, they sold out. Yeah. No, they just people know who they are now. It's yeah, like they're, they're still they the grew. same band, <laughs> yeah. they're still good. I don't understand just because they're making some money doing the thing that they right. love, you shouldn't hold that against them. Right, right. And there's definitely that mentality. It's interesting that that carries over into yeah, beer. Yeah, I think that carries across everything, to yeah, be honest. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little sad. Yeah. Now you guys do tastings as well, yeah? We do tastings. Our tap room is open uh, Tuesday through Sunday. Uh, during the week, Tuesday through Thursday, we're open 4 to 10, Friday 4 to 11. Saturday, one to, uh, 12 to 11, and Sunday, 1 to 7. So people can actually come here where you make Correct. the product yeah. and actually sample it. And actually right on the other side of the big cold stores right behind me is our entire brew floor. It's all open. Um, you can see in it, you can point at things, you can take pictures. Uh, and in our tap room, we've got shuffleboard, we've got old school Nintendo games, we've got giant Jenga, we've got couches. <laughs> giant Jenga! It's huge! It's a fun uh, place to, to play. Yeah. Now, I noticed that, because I actually discovered you because um, uh, my wife is on the board of uh, charity, we work charity with. that we work with. Yeah. And you guys had an event here. Mm -hmm. And I will admit oh. that when I first drove down here, I was like, uh, yeah. where are we? <laughs> is this safe? So it's a little intimidating when we first get and then you get here and like it's literally across the street and the whole vibe changes from three blocks over. Yeah, yeah well industrial area. Yeah, industrial area and uh, we don't have much signage, like it's hard to find us. Yeah. Uh, I've got I got a good picture of their sign by the way. Oh so good, okay. Like, like this Cause, big. Because if you blink, you might not see we it. We will miss it. Yeah. And it's not really near our door, it's just kinda in that general vicinity, so uh, once you find us though, you come in here like this is this is your home as much as it is our home. We really want you to feel like you can come, hang out, you know, just have a really good time. We're dog friendly, we're kid friendly, so you can bring the whole family. If you can't find Dave or I in the near future, we're hanging out with Connor <laughs> and we're shit faced. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, so we, we, we only practice responsible drinking. Yeah. All right. Exactly. So speaking of drinking. <laughs> Let's drink. Let's try some beers. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. All right. Yeah, so this is our uh, Pacific Kolsch Highway. This is our German Kolsch Lager. I'm sorry, say it again. Pacific Kolsch Highway. Kolsch Highway. Kolsch Highway. I see Highway. what you did there. Very I, funny. I see what you yeah, did there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Glad you noticed that. I did. Uh, yeah, so it's a Kolsch style beer, uh, which is a German lager, German blonde. Uh, light, easy drinking, biscuity. This is the beer that I would recommend if you're first step into craft beer, trying to style like a Kolsch or a Blonde or a, a Pilsner. Okay. So you'll get... What, what should we be expecting in this? Uh, you'll get... It's crisp, it's biscuity, mostly... It's biscuity, mostly, that's a new description it's for It's mostly me. malt forward, so uh, very little hot presence in this beer. Um, okay. 
Do you do a certain cheers? Cheers, yeah, uh, cheers. cheers. So, um, this is, I call this like our lawnmower beer. the same one? Lawnmower It's the same beer. one, yep. I think maybe, yeah, yeah it's, I think it's the same one, yeah, for sure. The color on that. I see that's a lighter, it's a light flavor, I like yep. it. A uh, little sweet, not over powerful. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's interesting that the uh, wine has its own set of, of descriptive words. Biscuit right. I, as a, as a new one. Biscuity. Brisket? Biscuity. Oh, biscuity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You will get barnyard. You'll get leather. You'll yep. get dirty. You'll get mahogany. No, no, what are you think, drinking? No, no. Dairy, yeah. I, pr I promise like you. Travel diarrhea. <laughs> yeah, but there there are words that you go. That doesn't sound like something I want to drink. But that's yeah. the words that they use yeah. when they're describing, especially, especially like reds Belgian. And, yeah. and stuff like that. So yeah. it's interesting that. What are some of the describing words that you would use for, for beers in general? For beers in general? So this one, I light, crisp, biscuity, uh, or pale ale, traditional Northwest with uh, like your upfront hops and a nice small backbone. Our IPA Del Rey is a straight West Coast IPA. Uh, so very hot forward with uh, like tangerine and nectarine notes. Mm. And then our stout is a little bit roasty, a little bit coffee, a little bit toasty. Uh, but it's everything you want in a stout, nothing you don't. So our philosophy to brewing beers is brewing high quality balanced beers for everyday drinking. Because um, we like to drink a lot of beer. I should go on a fucking poster. Yeah, we're working on it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, that's uh, right? yeah. And so we we like to drink beer in high volume. So we brew beers that we can drink in high volume. <laughs> and what's so. the uh, alcohol content on that? Four and a half percent. Which is nice, middle of the mm -hmm. road, not yeah, crazy. Yeah, pretty low for craft beer. I uh, think sometimes when you're talking about beers that get into that that high alcohol content, just mm -hmm. because it's not something that the average consumer is used to. Right. And you can say it all you want. Yeah. That's nine percent. Yeah. Be careful. They're yeah. Like, ha, ha. I know what I'm doing. Three, Wine is like 12. Three beers later, they're like, yeah, boom. Exactly. It's amazing. Yeah, and um, we don't want that, really. Yeah, like, no, because no, the idea is to be able to, be able to enjoy, enjoy it, it and it's not. We can, too. So uh, we want our beer to be accessible. Uh, we want it to be portable. We want you to take it with you. Um, if you want that high alcohol content, you're going to have to stick with Steel Reserve. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we do brew some, some beers. Uh, that are higher ABV, eight and a half. But in general, you you won't see like the 12% triple IPAs coming out of here uh, anytime so soon. So what's the difference in the brewing process between a beer like this and a mm -hmm. brew that's got that really high alcohol content? Uh, the grain. So it depends on how much grain you're using. Okay. If you're using a ton of grain, you're pulling out more sugars, you're gonna get more alcohol. Because uh, the when you're fermenting. It's the power of the yeast farts. Exactly, the yeast farts, exactly. Uh, so if you have less grain, you're gonna have less alcohol at the end of it. Interesting, yep. I didn't know that. Yeah, some people will ask is like, how many hops you add or uh, something like that or. It's got good belchiness to it also. <laughs> is that what you rate your beers on? Belchiness. So it's just really a belchy beer. It's so a really belchy it's beer, a, yeah. Gas in there and now, what affects the body of the beer? So when you're talking about a beer, like this is to me relatively light bodied. Yep. Uh, and then you get a beer that feels really thick and heavy in your mouth. Yeah. What, 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 what makes that happen? You can use uh, adjuncts like wheat, oat. Uh, both of those give you more of a full body mouth feel, more like milky in your mouth, I would say. Um, Whereas this beer, this is just straight. Dave too. really likes milk in his mouth. Milk in your mouth? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> I, I didn't know where this was going, but. <laughs> Welcome just, to the Bruce Yeah, it's start, starting to get spicy in here. Yeah, that's right. So that's, that's how we do it. Yeah. Yeah. Three sips in, and you're already. Yeah, I like this all the time. <laughs> yeah. I got this all the time. No, this is uh, amazing. Thank you. Um, do you guys do any aging, or do you guys do any barreling? We've only released two barrel aged beers. Uh, we did a collaboration with one of our accounts, and in return, they gave us some Delback whiskey barrels. And then we put that beer, it's called Bridge Builder. It's a Belgian triple with agave at 7.7, .7, so not four and a half, not super low. Uh, got, punch got a little punch to it. Uh, we aged it in a regular whiskey barrel and a mesquite whiskey barrel. Um, like two different, two different? Two different separate barrels. And then after six months, uh, we pulled them out, blended them, uh, and then served them side by side. So we had the original bridge builder, the mesquite w bridge builder, and just a straight whiskey bridge builder oh, all wow. on top next to each other. And so that was really fun, but 
we probably won't get too deep into barrel aging, at least in the next couple years. Uh, one, space, and sure. two, um, we don't really care for them that much. Yeah. <laughs> like you whiskey, feel like it, yeah. Do you feel like it's gimmicky? I don't feel like it's gimmicky, no. I feel like if I wanted to drink whiskey, I would drink whiskey. Or if I wanted to drink rum barrel, like I would drink rum, you know? like. I don't yeah, necessarily, no, I get it. There's I don't necessarily need like, that in my, my beer. That's not beer. That's beer and something else. You yeah. Know? To me, I, I while I, I get the uh, I get the attraction of a, like a shock top, mm -hmm. but I feel like it's you don't really like beer because yeah. you're trying to cover it up with the taste of raspberry or pumpkin Coriander or, or whatever beer, it is whatever, that you're yeah, doing. Shock top, yeah. And I get it. I yeah. get why people do that. But I think that if you actually like beer, and I think a lot of people do consume beer to consume, yeah. not because they actually enjoy beer, right. but they usually are drinking PBR. Right. Yeah, so I guess like- Not that I never drink PBR, <laughs> I've done it. I mean, PBR was my favorite poor man's beer. Uh, exactly. Still is, or, or still is, like yeah. Or Yingling. Or natural light, Yingling. you know? Yeah, natural oh no, 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 no. Yeah. yeah, Natty. Yeah, Natty. I, grew, I like, high, uh, college was like- That's Keystone. a poor man's Keystone, Keystone yeah. Light, yeah. <laughs> and we like, yeah. when they yeah. changed up the packaging, we they have the orange. We got Keystone four dollars. What are we yeah. gonna do? We're gonna get some Keystone. We're gonna get We're thirty gonna get rack for five Keystone. dollars. Yeah, no, 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 uh, and, and four ramen coffee. noodles. Beer with coffee. Beer with coffee. I we like that because we love. Yeah, we're we're actually playing around with a. Ooh, somebody had a, a cold beer. brew. Uh, cold brew. Uh, my, I want to say it might have been Sam Adams, but Could, okay. I'm I know sure. it came in one of those. I didn't buy it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I didn't do it. Uh, <laughs> there's that bougie coming out of yeah. here. Yeah. But it, they were like, oh, I got it at Costco and one of those, oh, it's got like seven kinds of beers in it. And the so, sampler packs. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I was uh, like, wow, this is actually pretty decent. I didn't really feel like you got any of the benefit from the cold brew, but yeah. it was an interesting. You, you didn't have more energy? No, no. Well, that's well, kind of the thing. It's like, like Beer, red beer, beer and coffee are counteracting each other. Yeah, so it's, it's like Red Bull and vodka. You're yeah, like, great, exactly. you got a really alert drunk person. Yeah, and your heart hates you. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. yeah, well, my, my general. Out. Yeah, my general philosophy with beer, though, is there is no wrong beer and there's no wrong way to drink a beer. If you want to drink PBR, if you want to drink Shock Top, drink PBR, drink what Shock you want, Top. What you like. Yeah, if that's if that's what you like and that's what you want to drink, then more power to you. You know, yeah. would I prefer you to come into the craft segment? Sure. Yeah. But at the same time, but there's an like, educational process too. You know, like there was a time when I couldn't have enjoyed this. Yeah. You know, or PBR was my palate. Right. So I think a lot of that has to do, and if you're not in that place, it's no different than like going to a restaurant and going, why do I get these little tiny portions? Right. We want you to just enjoy the food. But if that's not where you are, yeah. then, then the, like, the buffet is still good for you. <laughs> yeah, you know? And that's yeah. not to judge, it's just not where you, sometimes exactly. you're not there anymore. Now, people can come down and get little samples. Yeah, we do, we do flights. Do flights. Yeah, uh, we'll build them however you want. If you want to do one sampler, we'll do one sampler. If you want to do every beer we have on the board, we'll more than happily do that as well. Every beer, every, every beer. beer. Speaking of every beer. Next beer. Let's do another one. All right. So All right. tell me, what, what, what do we get? What did you think of that last one, Dan? It was good. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I like it. I, I do like the lighter mm -hmm. flavored beers and stuff, and it's good. Awesome. I'm if you were if you're at home, what do you what do you drink at home? I already told you. <laughs> Say it again for the kids. Natty light? Do you really? Light? Oh, that's what I thought you meant like back in the day no, that's what you drink. Oh, that's still in your that's refrigerator. Well, that's, the girlfriend buys it, it's cheap at her work, she just buys it to drink beer. So yeah. It's not it's not it's just, it's one of those things that you're talking about, you just to drink it. Yeah, right, right, not right, to right. enjoy it, yeah. not to do anything then. Um, I like... You know liquor's quicker. Yeah, no, huh? <laughs> we do a little of that too. Um, yeah, I'm a rum guy, I like rum. Right. Um, but um, if I was to get a beer like out, I do like the um, like the Blue Moon or the Shark mm -hmm. Top or the, the Hefeweizen type. The Belgian White Belgian or Hefeweizen, whites. yeah. They like the, I do like the citrus, mm -hmm. a little bit sweeter. Yeah, kind of stuff. Not, just, like very minimal hot presence, yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you do anything with Domain LA? Domain LA? Yeah. They're traditionally a wine shop, okay. but they carry craft. Oh, nice. And they rotate out. So yeah. I'll have to check them out. A little tip for you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, I found a discovery. I can't remember the name. I want to say it was Joust or something. Some strange beer I'd never heard of. It's like $7 a bottle. Yeah. And we got it as like a Thanksgiving thing, and it was just like phenomenal. Nice. And, uh, and my wife doesn't drink beer, and she yeah. was like, oh my god, this is the best beer I've ever had. That's awesome. like Every year we kind of go back and yeah. have it again. Yeah. It has it very rarely now. But our, what, are we, what are we drinking now? So this is uh, called Indie uh, Pale Ale? 
Uh, it's a pale ale. <laughs> How's that going? <laughs> Indy, uh, pale ale? All right. Yeah. You have to order it that way. You have to order it that way. So yeah, when you, you come in here. You don't get it right, yeah. you don't get it. Mm -mm. They just nope. bring you a Schlitz. Yeah, we'll, we'll just pour you something totally random. Um, yeah, so this is our Northwest uh, Pale Ale. It's got Simcoe, Cascade, and Mosaic hops. Uh, so you'll get a nice like pininess out of it. You'll get uh, maybe a little tropical fruit, but mostly it's well balanced. You get a nice backbone. Uh, we use some British malts in here, so a little bit of a caramel backbone to it as well. So. Hmm. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Or is it caramel? Caramel, caramel, tomato, tomato, potato, potato. Oh. It smells, it that's, smells that's, different that's, right that's that. completely that. different. Totally different. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot more complex in my back. To me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And like the culture is designed to be a very straightforward, like kind of beer, whereas our pale ales, our IPAs, and our other beers have more complexity and a yeah. little more depth. Yeah, I like the them. citrus notes on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I noticed the smell like that right away. Yeah. Before I even took a sip of it, the smell is good. Also, our beers, we brew them to be pretty dry, meaning that you don't get a lot of residual stick in your mouth. So once you swallow the beer, it's not really lingering around too much. Um, the idea is like, with food, you know, we don't really want to cancel out food, or we just want you to want that next sip too. Do you do pairings? We have done uh, some cheese pairings. Um, we've done some pairing dinners. Um, so yeah. Now, what would you what would you put this with? Food wise, <laughs> so I'm not really like super into the pairing stuff. Like, I would put this with anything I'm eating, to be yeah. honest. Like cheeseburger, yeah, yeah, like, steak, mac yeah. and cheese, mac and cheese out of the box. Yeah, yeah, definitely, <laughs> totally fine. Yeah, yeah. no, no, no. So, but, I mean, um, it's it's. I'm just I was curious. For, I don't know, like hoppy beers. People tend to say spicy food, so like Thai food, um, maybe. Well, you really are. I don't from know. LA. I think yeah, I love Thai food. Um, so I don't, I don't really subscribe to the whole like pairing thing. We did some beer and cheese pairings. Like sure, like they were cool, but ah, like they didn't mean that. By the way, <laughs> they didn't like. I meant whatever. it, but they didn't like blow my mind. You know, it's not like something that. No, it's it's I interesting. Really... I think that with uh, wines, there are definitely wines that like you you can you can take a sip of it and then you can have something and then take another sip of it. Yeah, it's a different wine. Right. I don't know that I've, I've ever noticed it. Yeah. The same with beer. Yeah. Do you do, you do something to clean your palate if you're if you're sampling beer? You know, like they do wine, they usually will actually spit it out or. Yeah, it's called it or beer nuts. Beer nuts. Uh, beer so beer what nuts. I what I do is, what I do to cleanse my palate is uh, I pour the a little bit of the next beer into my previous cup. I swirl it to clean the glass a little. I drink it and then I refill it with beer. That's basically it. Like I don't. You yeah, you don't. Beer, yeah, I use beer to clean. Beer. Yeah, beer, yeah. Beer. yeah, to chase beer. Yeah, beer to chase beer. Yeah. I'd like a beer with a beer back. <laughs> yep. That's right. That's basically my philosophy in so life. It's just beer. nothing wrong with that. More now, beer. I know you better. guys have merch. You have T-shirts. You have hats. Yep. You have nuts and jerky. Jerky and chips and. Now is that the the, the what we have uh, when you're open for tastings? Yep, all of that is available. We don't have our own kitchen. Uh, food was being, my background being in a brew pub, I could see that food was kind of its own nightmare. So, to, and oh. also a completely separate Absolutely. business. It is. So, um, we just have the bar food, the easy like prepackaged stuff that we can just buy and then, you know, sell. Smart. Yeah. Smart. I've always been of the philosophy don't do something that you don't want to have to keep doing. <laughs> yeah. And I hate it. And if it, it doesn't tables. make a difference, yeah, it doesn't make a difference. Yeah. I, so when I finish, when I finish waiting tables, I hated everybody. Like I'm a, you know, like I like to talk to you guys. I like to talk to people. Like that's one thing that I'm really passionate about is getting to know people. But when I was waiting tables, I didn't want to talk to anybody. Like I would go up to the table and just already hate them instantly because they were gonna, <laughs> they were gonna order like. 14 Diet Coke refills and I was just not going to want to do it. I like that. So, yeah. Having worked in the restaurant industry, I completely understand. Yeah. Like, there are people that you're like, I'm so glad those people came in. They were awesome. Yeah. But most people that come in, they're into whatever's happening between that two to four different people. Right. And they hate you. Yeah. They don't like care. They actually hate you. You're just their food. slave. You're like, yeah. why, why can't you give me what I want <laughs> when I want it? Read my mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, no, so being in this, for, um, yeah. Um, People can come here and sample, but can they also buy it to take it home from here? Or do they have to go to a store or a restaurant? No, yeah, we uh, we have growlers 
We can do growler fills. I think they're actually. Growler always saying this sounds like such an angry term. Growler. Oh, a growler. A yeah. guy comes out and is like, Rah. So we sell the growlers. Yeah, you can, you can bring your own growler. Uh, you can buy one really? of our growlers. Um, but is we that also one do. There? That is one right there. Yeah, we actually have two. We have our glass and our ceramic. Yeah, we'll bring it over. Bring it over. We're yeah. giving orders now. So this is our ceramic because wow. we're not like super snobby about beer, but we are still beer geeks in our hearts. So this one, we were like, yeah, we got to get those. And then our normal glass growler. So Maybe we need to turn this into a bong. Yeah, we probably could. Right? I think so. Just like, yeah. Right? No problem. That's really, I just see how heavy that is. Oh, wow. It's, it feels full when it's empty. Wow. That's what so. she said. <laughs> so people can buy these and have them fill and then yeah, we'll fill. back. Yep, exactly. And we also do can releases once a month or so, oh, okay. uh, where we, we release a special release IPA, um, and then we have Del Rey, which Kinda is Kind of sounds like IPA. you go out in, in the, the woods. Can. Yeah. And you're like, let's go release the cans. Release the cans. Go, <laughs> cans, go! <laughs> Be free! Well, can, Be free! Can people buy this in, in like, beer bottle also? Like, uh, we, don't, we don't actually bottle. You don't have a bottle, okay. Yeah. Now, why do you go cans instead of bottles? Uh, I know there's a reason. Yeah, because cans are a way better packaging unit than yeah. a bottle. Uh, first and foremost, no light gets through a can, uh, and light degrades beer very quickly. So even if it's in, so if it's in a brown bottle, it's blocking the most light, but it's still only blocking about 85% of the light. And if it's sitting in a cooler at a liquor store or a grocery store, the light from that cooler is degrading that beer every single second. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas cans, that doesn't happen. Uh, two, they're lighter and they ship easier, so sure. you can get a lot more on a pallet. Um, and most I'm importantly, I'm guessing losses less, but just because you you're, you're not going to get much breakage. I'm sure there are right. incidents that you get yeah. where you have a can puncture, blah 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 blah. But you drop a you drop a case of of, of bottles and you've lost a case of bottles. Exactly. Yeah, you drop a case of cans, they're just going to be smushy. Yeah. And maybe ex explodey a little bit when they open. <laughs> explodey. Explodey. Um, yeah, so and then like really one of the most important reasons is the accessibility part of it. We want you to take our cans to uh, go on your bike rides, your hikes. We want you to take our cans to the pool, the beach. We want you to like class, we yeah. want our cans to go with you. Uh, whereas Hollywood class won't do it. Hollywood Bull, yeah. Hollywood Forever. I'm just trying to help out. Yeah. Uh, and, and you can't Hollywood detect sign. aluminum <laughs> metal detectors either, right? So. Oh, I guess. Yeah, I didn't even thought about that. Yeah. I was, I'm going to hold on to that one. Fourth. Yeah. <laughs> no metal detectors. Yeah, you can carry them onto the airplanes. And also, you can bring yeah. in your camel pack, and they will fill your camel pack with beer. <laughs> uh, we will not do that. No. But that was a good idea. Oh, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> we will give you a funnel. You can fill your own damn Yeah, we do have a flamingo funnel. Nice. Yeah, so. <laughs> well, let's try another one. All right. How many more do you have? Two? We can do two. And so, what do we have now? We have our IPA Del Rey. This is our flagship IPA. Uh, I like that. Flagship. Flagship. I want to have a flagship. Yeah. Oh, well. I mean, you probably build you like a ship with a flag yeah, on it and flag. then you just call it a flagship. Do you have a flag? Sorry, then you got a ship. Is, or, yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is our West Coast IPA, Citra Equinot hops, which are citrusy and like tangerine-y, nectarine-y. So this is a straight West Coast IPA, very hop forward, still well balanced. So you won't get the face puckering bitterness uh, and you'll get a decent amount of uh, tangerine, nectarine notes out of it. So hmm. where do you get these different types of hops? Like what's the... We contract them. Yeah. Yeah. The hop game is kind of complicated. The so hop game. The hop, hop game. game. Yeah. So you have to. You so. basically have to project out what hops you're going to need for the year, mm. and then you put those on contract, and then you can pull them from the hop distributor when you need them. Interesting. That's so, complex. Yeah. And some hops are not available, so like we sign hop contracts for them like four years before we're actually. Really. Getting, yeah. Four years wow. in advance, so that like in 2020 we'll be able to get so this you hop. Just put it in reserve. It's really it, yeah. And so what they do, like the hop guy, like the hop farms, once you sign that contract, they'll literally go out and plant those binds for your for your order. So it's a very like and those grow up and over, right? Yeah, they're they're it's interesting. They're called binds, but they're like basically the same thing as vines. Uh -huh. I think vines like have the little suckers on them, and binds don't. don't. So they they, so. they manually string they them manually, up. Manually, yeah. Well, they they'll grow uh, on string, and those, uh, those I think they'll curl around. They do something so that yeah. it's easy. Like I I remember seeing some random show on it. Yeah. They do it so that they can come through and 
and get the get the all process the, easier. The process, yeah. And it just like pulls them through rather than nice. if they grow on their own, they kind of get all Yeah, they'll go crazy. everywhere. Yeah. yeah. They, they take a lot of care. They're not easy. They're not an easy crop. Uh, there are a lot of times where there'll be hop shortages and you just won't be able to get the hop that you need for that beer. Um, so thankfully there's a hundred different hop varieties. There's sad craft beer drinkers everywhere uh, on a bad hop you, year. You, you actually well, planned out on what you're going to make a year or two years in advance? Like So beers like this that we know will be pretty much a staple for years to come, we can project out. Okay. With our rotational beers, we might just use hops that we already had or uh, we might go and spot buy. Uh, see what's you know, available. See what's available. Yeah, you pay more when you spot buy, but it might be a hop that we can't get under contract, so we'll pay a couple extra bucks per pound just so that we can use it for this beer that we really want to use it for. You know, are there constantly new things happening with hops? Like, oh, this guy came up with this thing and yada, yada, yada. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they're constantly like, I don't know, oh, I'm wow. not a farmer, engineering, so yeah. engineering, 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 thank you, thank you. I was really struggling with like splicing or like yeah, Gino, yeah. whatever. They'll, they'll mix different hops, they'll make new strains. They take um, a gnome, when a, when a <laughs> male gnome and a female, female gnome really like each other a lot. That's how it happens? That's how it happens, yeah. So oh, this shit. is, um, I didn't know that. This is totally different. This is totally yeah, different, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is a, this probably leans more towards a beer that's not as friendly on my palate. Yeah. There's a, to me, there's yeah. a bitterness, there's a bite mm -hmm. that I don't as, enjoy as much. Yeah. Not that I wouldn't drink it. Yeah, that's totally fine. But I wouldn't I, pick it. Yeah, uh, based on what we've been drinking, you guys definitely seem to skew towards the lighter beers. Mm -hmm. And that's why we do brew the full he spectrum. Said you guys are beer sissies. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Stop, being, <laughs> yeah. Stop being such a bitch, guys. Do you want to cut yeah. up water for you? Well, you're really going to love what we got next is our stout. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh. Yeah. So, so what's that. the difference when we say IPA stout? What's the difference? Yeah, uh, so like process-wise, what makes those two things happen? So the main difference is the amount of hops that go into into it in general. So with IPA Del Rey, there's a bunch of bittering hops, which are hops that we put into the boil. Uh, with a stout, very low bitterness, very little hops go into the the boil, and also the grain bill is very different. So this is a much lighter beer, whereas the stout we use roasted grains, which are black, and so they give them that they give a stout that really dark dark color. Now, do you roast your own grains or is that something no. you give them to me? No. That's so, like, you know, you don't mess that around with so that that's like, that's like, it's too much like growing your own hops and growing your own grain and then malting it and then roasting it is, that's a whole different, right. whole different ball game, you know? You just want to make the damn beer. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, there's that's not very good. many breweries that even actually try to get into the, like the farm side of things yeah. because it is so difficult and there are companies that are out there that have been doing it for a hundred years that are phenomenal. Right? Why would it. you? And the consistency don't reinvent always, the wheel. Exactly. Yeah. Especially. And like, I imagine that you set yourself up for a bunch of other problems because yeah. you've gone, oh, we're going to do our thing from beginning to end. Right. And when you have a problem, you don't have that network that you have. Right. Where you're like, oh, well, that didn't work out. We're going to go buy from Bob or whoever. Right. right. We can't it's get them Bob, we got another guy. Yeah. You're like, oh, well, we're you just can't point alive. fingers anymore, which, and yeah. <laughs> it wasn't, no, that wasn't me. Uh, it I was, did it. It was him. Wait, I did yeah. it. Oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> um, what kind of um, leftovers do you have from the brewing process, and what do you do with them? Uh, really just spent grain. So the barley, once it's all steeped and we pull all the sugars out of it, that grain is no longer of use to us, so we pull that out and we work with the farmer. Uh, and he comes and he picks up all of our spent grain and he feeds his livestock with it. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we want to like every brewery has like their own farmer, yeah. and that's like one of the like we're very much a family as an industry, and we really try to support each other as much as possible. But nobody will let you know who their farmer is <laughs> because it is so hard to get your spent grain like picked up. So like. Oh, is it? Yeah. I would think it would be easy. I would think they, they would they're looking it. for that. Well, there's like, there are some that are, and then they find their brewery, and that's, and that's it. Like, stay with they it. come with one truck, and for us, like, we fill one truck each week. So if you come with one truck, we're going to fill it every week, and you're not going to get anybody else's grain. So it's like, kind of like, that's like one of the big mm. industry secrets is like, who's your farmer? You want, I don't know. Do you know what your farmer does? 
Uh, I think he farms. Farms. Yeah. He has animals of some kind. Right? I think so. I set myself yeah. up for that in case anybody wanted yeah. to see it. Yeah, he like threw that is softball he, uh, up and I just like. Is he. Pigs, cows? Pigs. Yeah. Pigs, yeah. yeah. That would be really cool is to get him to like bring you some of his bacon or something that he does yeah does he? i've got sausage in my freezer right oh, now yeah stop it <laughs> that is yeah. so amazing yeah it's really awesome and he does like these like slim jim kind of things too that were pretty bomb and yeah like real slim jim like real like real yeah, yeah 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 because like, slim jim's kind of gross when you think yeah about i don't it. think there's any meat in that yeah yeah like, i don't know what's in this it's just parts it's like yeah it's just like pig testicles or something i don't know see that's when i knew i had changed as a consumer yeah is when i started worrying about where my meat came from mm -hmm. so I'm like i shop at uh you don't at all i don't care you should do you do, you do the like Portlandia thing where you go to the actual chicken farm? No. No. But I go to Mercado Meats mm -hmm. in at the Grove. Okay. And those guys are amazing. Yeah. Uh, we do, and every year now I do. We do. A, it's called a Willy Bird, uh, and so it's these Willy turkeys bird. that okay. are graze fed. Okay. And they're expensive. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie to you. The first one we got, I was like, yeah. holy, holy shit. shit. Yeah. I just paid seventy dollars for a fifteen pound fucking wow. turkey. Yeah. And we've done it for four years now. Yeah. It's that good. It's that good. The 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 taste and the flavor. And I imagine that that is transferred over with something like this. We've got a, a byproduct that is consumable, mm -hmm. and yep. there's a direct feed into there. Yeah. And you know what that pig ate. It ate your stuff. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> and that's amazing. Don't eat my beer. Uh, yeah, it's really cool. It's really nice to not have to throw it away, you know? Because right, then that's, like, that's such a waste. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, we... It's recycling, part of the recycling. It's part of recycling, we yeah. To, we need to interview his farmer. I'm not telling you who he is. Tell you? me who your father is. I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> you won't put it together, but we just might happen to yeah. visit a farm someday. Hey, you. Yeah. <laughs> who's your brewery? Who's your brewery? Yeah. Still, you'll do it the hey, back buddy. way. Yeah. Who's your brewery? What beers, you, what beers have you been drinking recently? Uh, well, this is really good. Thank you. This, uh, this might it's grow on, on you. It might yeah. grow on me. Yeah. This is. This is. I think this is the third or fourth beer in for me yeah yeah i couldn't start with it okay yeah yeah like once you're once, once you you're like your palate's a little bit like once, completely once my, wrecked once, yeah. yeah once my face is, is already drunk i'm like well, oh yeah. this is delicious oh, God, I don't have one. well that's a that's high that's a high compliment thank you <laughs> this is good if i'm already drunk yeah. good stuff. this no no i i it is good it um but it doesn't remind that's one of the things i don't like like say something like heineken yeah like oh Heineken is such a good beer, but it, it tastes like grass to me. Yeah. Okay, so Heineken is in green bottles, which is even worse than brown bottles, which lets you in even more light. And then you have Corona in clear, clear bottles. bottles. So the reason I'm sorry, that sorry all of my Mexican friends, but Corona well that's is a why that's beer. why like they end up tasting pretty skunky. Yeah. You know, like they're just not you, good anymore. And you don't know how long it's been. You have no idea. In the store no. Or, and then it got warm, and then it got cold. How, tell, how does that affect? Uh, beer should warm always be cold, cold. Warm, cold. It's not good for the beer. Uh, if you go to your liquor store and you buy a four pack out of the refrigerator, and it sits in your car as you drive home, and then you put it back in your refrigerator, that's fine. Like That's not really going to do anything. That's totally fine. Unless you live um, in LA and you drove for four hours. Uh, yeah, and if you <laughs> threw it in your trunk without any AC, and it's just like boiling in the cans, it's going to suck. But you know, if you like just give it you, it should stay refrigerated through the supply chain. So for us, we got the big cold storage over there. Every beer is cold. Our distributor has a cold truck, picks it up. It's refrigerated on his truck to his cold storage at his facility. Sits in his cold storage, and then when it goes out to the stores, hopefully the stores will keep it cold. But it's not always the case. It's a scientific thing, because I've, I've been all over Europe, mm -hmm. and they drink warm beer. Well, yeah. They're starting to go a lot of, well, they have cold beer available, but right. their, their whole thing was, was warm or room temperature. Right. So how does that, or is it just their, their temperature? Yeah, they're just It is also, just weird, I mean, you got to think too, know. that temperature-wise, <laughs> yeah. room temperature there is like 40. Yeah. Room temperature. You know, it's not the same as room temperature here where it was, you know, 96 outside today. Yeah, and humid. I yeah, like with humidity. Yeah, yeah, cool. I, I think, think I think in general most Americans would. The first time I went, the yeah. first time I went to, to Europe, and I was like, "This is disgusting. <laughs> yeah. Why is my beer and yeah, everything, everything? Yeah. Like here's a soda, and you're like, why is it? 
But it's hot. Why is it warm? Did you guys know that they invented a refrigerator? Yeah, they have yeah. a new thing, and it makes like stuff really cool. It's very solid ice. Yeah. Yeah. So what's next? What's next is our stout. Stout. Well, so this is dark. This is dark. Yeah, this is our like your soul. <laughs> Sorry. Don't remind me. <laughs> I was like, nah, I just had an emo flashback. You know, like I bleed black. In my days as an emo kid. It is dark. Tell us yeah. about the dark. <laughs> All right. So this is a uh, O'Malley's Irish Stout. Uh, 5.2% alcohol, a little roasty, a little toasty, really nice, easy drinking stout, everything you want in a stout, nothing you don't. Although you guys are more light beer drinkers, so it might, that, that terminology <laughs> may not, oversell it? I may have oversold it, but uh, it's still, it's so medium bodied, so it's not like eating a sandwich, um, it's not heavy, it's just a nice, light, crushable stout. Where did we come up with the name? Uh, actually, Kevin, his last name is O'Malley. And his bucket list, yeah, he's one of my partners, and his, yeah, his, uh, his bucket list was to have a beer named after him, so. And there you yeah. go. Did you have to chew it? You look like you're chewing over there. Oh, wait. It's almost got a little chocolatey type taste to it. A little chocolatey, yeah. Yeah, oh, interesting. I, there's a smell, there's something on it, and I can't figure out what it is. But it's not beery, like yeah. oddly. Like uh, it's not what you expect when you open a can of a lighter right, right. Of beer. Yeah, it's almost got like, like I want to say smoky coffee. Smoky coffee. Smoky yeah. coffee. Yeah. yeah. Coffee, coffee, chocolate, coffee, yeah. mocha. Bless you. <laughs> I enjoy that. Hey, oh. That is completely different, and I, I undersold it. I then. can't tell you that I. <laughs> I can honestly tell you that I can't compare it to anything. Like I can't go, this like tastes Guinness. like, yeah. this yeah. tastes like yeah. any other dark beer that I've had. Like I had an expectation going in, yeah. in my head, dark beer, this is what it's gonna taste yeah. like, and it doesn't at all. Oh, it actually awesome. doesn't really taste like another beer. Yeah, well I appreciate that, that's. What? <laughs> that was actually a high compliment. Yeah, that was awesome. That's really you. neat. Cheers. That you don't run into that very often. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't I've taste. Had a, I've had like chocolate, chocolate beers. Yeah. And things like that. It's good for. Now that's gimmicky as hell. As a float. It's, it's just peanut butter stouts or. This would be wait, good. This would be good. Wait, with what? There's a peanut butter stout. Oh, there's yeah, there's a few out there. Yeah. This would be good with ice cream, vanilla ice cream. Mm. In it. Now you're just weird. Float. I can't beer, do. Beer yeah. Floats? I can't do beer and ice cream. I think oh, it's weird. Your float. This would be good. With <laughs> I did that on, on Dave and I aren't shows. friends anymore, by the way. <laughs> we can't hang out. Maybe a little half and half? No. 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 I think, yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, there's a little dirt, there's a little, I, I hate to say thing, you, words like that, but that's that's what you come yeah, off of it. A little, there's a little dirt, there's a little toasted something or other. Yeah. Roast, like roasty toasty. Yeah, so you guys have a, that's a delicious. Good for everybody here, you got you got your your lighters, your in the betweens, and your darkers. Yeah, we so, we brew the full spectrum. Yeah, so whatever type of beer you like, you got to come get some of this. We got it for you. Something so let's run you. down it real uh, yes. one more time. When are you open? When should we come down? If I'm Joe Schmo yep. from you know K Town or from the Valley, yep. I'm driving over here. Right, I wanna, yeah, I want to get down here and I want to have a tasting. Yeah. What are the days? What are the times? Uh. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, Tuesday through Thursday, we are four to 10. Friday, we are four to 11. Saturday, we're 12 to 11. And Sunday, we're one to seven. Awesome, and if we wanted to find you on social media. The Soch, uh, Indie Brew Co. on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We have a website, IndieBrewCo.com. And uh, if you want to talk to our Instagram account, you're talking to me. So, we'll can't wait to meet you. We'll put all the links down here down below. Yeah in the description yeah. and uh it's right, right down here it's listed somewhere right down here, here. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. we'll pop it up awesome yeah. well hey thanks cool. for having us yeah, out absolutely really appreciate it i think it. You, uh we're gonna stick around and do a tour nice. you'll see the footage and uh so basically everything starts with grain uh we've got pallets of grain over there and they're whole kernels so the first thing we want to do is we want to crack them we want to separate them into a third husk a third meat and a third powder uh, and then that gets augered up into our grist case where we can rest it so we can, we can get our grain ready for tomorrow's brew. Uh, and it'll sit there and then we auger it back in up into 
our mash tun. That's what this is here? This is the mash tun, yeah, and you can actually see inside of here. So this is where all the grain comes. Uh, we add a very specific temperature of water, and all of that sits above this false bottom. And we let that steep for 60 minutes, and when that's done, all of the liquid drops through this false bottom and then comes on out through all of our piping right here. Through the brew house to that vessel. That's our, uh, that's our boil kettle. That's where we boil our wort, which was the sugar water we just made and we add our hops. So for a uh, hoppy beer like our IPA Del Rey, a lot of hops get added to the process right here. For our stouts and our Kolsch, very little hops get added. And for our New England styles, no hops get added here. And then so, once you do, so you do one, one batch, one type of beer at a time? One type of beer at a time, that's okay. right. Um, so sometimes we brew the same beer twice to fill up our fermenters, because we have a 10 barrel system and we have 20 barrel fermenters. So to get those fermenters full, we'll brew two days in a row. Um, so once the boil's done, it runs through our plate chiller. You can actually see the beer running through it right now that we brewed today. So it'll come through our plate chiller. And what this does is it cools it down from boiling temperature to roughly 70 degrees instantly as it passes through. Cold water is going one way in an opposite channel, and the beer is going in another way in a different channel, and that strips all the heat out instantly. And then, if you just want to follow the hose coming through, we transfer, once it goes through the plate chiller, we transfer it right into the fermenter. And once it's in our fermenter, that's where we pitch the yeast. And the yeast eats the sugar that we made in the first step, when we made our sugar water, our wort, and that turns that into CO2 and alcohol. Mm. And so once it's actually done fermenting in here, it's technically beer, but it's not fully carbonated beer. So we go to those two further tanks. And so those are our bright tanks. Uh, and what happens there is we finish off the carbonation to get it to the level specific to every individual beer and it varies depending on what beer it is. And then we can package right off of here, whether it's kegs, bottles, cans. These are all empty kegs. Um, They're ready to be filled? Ready to be cleaned with caustic and then sanitized and then filled. Nice. So there's still a couple steps away from being ready. And that's, that's the brewing process in a nutshell. How much, uh how much do you normally put out? Like gallon-wise, or how do you measure? Gallon-wise, okay, so every barrel is 31 gallons. Um, so we have a 10 barrel system that's 310 gallons of beer per brew. We have four 20 barrel fermenters. Uh, so we do double batches to fill four of them, and then we have one 10 barrel fermenter. And so we now have 90 barrels of capacity on our brew floor, which, I suck at math. I'm not even gonna try. Um, That's a lot. Yeah. It's 90 barrels times 31 gallons. And it all goes out through distribution? Uh, not all of it. A lot of it comes through the tap room. Yeah. Uh, and then our special release IPA cans mostly come through the tap room. We'll send a few cases out to our uh, original accounts, uh, some of the better bottle shops that have been with us since the beginning, um, but most of the, our cans go through the tap room as well. You have a fridge? Yeah, here. our cold storage is over here. Walk, we can walk go in. walk in there. Ooh, it feels good in here. Yeah, nice and cool. Nice and so, cool. This is all, most of it is, uh, no, these are empties in the middle because we had nowhere else to store them, but the other, other kegs are full. I'm Stu. And I'm David. And this is Brews Brothers, Brothers Go. We are leaving the wonderful indie brew company. Connor over here is <laughs> appearing in the background. We had a great time. We tried out some fabulous beers, learned a lot. We did. And you guys got to come down and take a look at it. Check it out. 
Check them out on social media, find them on the web. They're right down here in Boyle Heights, and we'll see you on the next Bruise Brothers, Brothers Go. Go. Bye bye. Hello, I'm Stu. And I'm David. And this is the Bruce Brothers, Brothers Show. <laughs> Let's do that again. Let me actually take this real quick. I was like, how'd you guys cue the music like that? And bam! Yeah. We're good. Hi, I'm Stu. And I'm David. And this is Bruce, Bruce Brothers, Brothers Show. Go. go. Let's try that again. Bro Bruce, Bruce Brothers, Brothers go. go? Yeah, isn't that what, is that what you want to do? Okay. Bruce Brothers Go Show. Bruce Brothers, Bruce Brothers Go. 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 Okay.